Todashi is my oldest brother. I'm the youngest in the family of six. We grew up in Lahaina, um, and we all graduated from Lahaina Luna. There's a, a, a little story about his, uh, when Hawaii was a territory then, of course, and he had won first prize in the territory-wide uh, poster contest when he was in the second or third grade, and, uh, but he always loved art. He, he took a lot of responsibility, family responsibility, uh, but uh, at the same time, he had to go with his vision. Art was his life. He was a wonderful brother. Um, he took me to my first, he, uh, uh, first meeting with my piano teacher. And he, he talked my folks into letting me have music lessons even if we were very poor. And he was at that time 16 and I was nine. And he, um, he was working uh, um, after school at the elementary school across the street, Camp Third School. And um, part of his earnings went to pay for my lessons. Yeah, he was just wonderful. We've been, we've been very close, mm -hmm, yeah. He got out of the army. Um, he came back um, and enrolled in a business school. <laughs> it wasn't his, you know, cup of tea. And so he got bored and he started drawing cartoons and one of them was cartoon of the teacher. <laughs> and the teacher caught him and, and uh, took him to the director's office and said, they say, perhaps you don't belong here. And so th there was an uh, opening at um, the Academy of Arts and he enrolled there. And uh, thankfully there was a famous artist by the name of Ralston Crawford from New York and he recognized Tadashi's talent immediately. So he was at the Pratt Institute for a while, uh, maybe a couple of years, um, in graphic arts. And then uh, Ralston Crawford also arranged for him to take lessons with Stuart Davis, the well-known you know, abstractionist, and um, at, at the Brooklyn Museum and that really determined his course of life. He would work for a while, just enough to pay the rent and you know, buy food and so forth. And then he would quit for a while so he could paint, mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it was a good fortune that uh, th this boy upstairs where he lived had a bit part in a play called The Tea House of the August Moon, and it was playing on Broadway at that time. And at the end of the season, there was a big party at the Waldorf Astoria. And there, um, he saw Charles Lawton, you know, talking about his art collection and everything. But Charles Lawton got curious and he visited the studio and he liked it immediately and he arranged for a one-man show at one of the galleries in New York. And then he brought his friends over, which included Burgess Meredith and Cornelia Otis Skinner, and they all bought a few paintings. And uh, Burgess Meredith told him, you quit your job as guard at the, the Modern Museum. <laughs> and he quit. And they sort of helped him out by, um, well, sending uh, paintings to California. And I guess they introduced him to a lot of other friends. Before this work was commissioned, he already had the painting. He had already painted that and called it Aquarius. When the bids 
came out the opportunity for the bids to come up, he was looking through his paintings and he thought, oh, this one would be a good one. Yeah. And so uh, he submitted that painting. But he always said, you know, whenever he sits in front of the easel, it's like going on a journey. I recall um, his taking me and my, our mother um, uh, and my daughter was visiting uh, from the mainland and we, he drove us to Nakalele and he drove way up uh, a winding uh, road and, and it's uphill and then he stopped the car and he said let's get out here and he said now we're going to walk up this little hill and we looked down he said look down and there was a cove a semicircle cove and it was noon and the reflection of the water it was it was like sparkling and then you could you could almost see the submerged rocks you know sort of floating out. I mean you could just imagine it. It, it it didn't but you know it just seemed as if it was floating and all these sparkling um, uh, colors and the water was so clean it, it was so beautiful well he saw that ev almost every day when he went fishing you know uh -huh. and I thought about it when I saw this mural and a lot of his paintings are images of sea water, the ocean with the submerged rocks, yeah. So a lot of his paintings are scenes of Nakalele. Definitely his art will speak for itself about his love for Hawaii. And I hope, you know, the people who like his paintings actually are sharing his own vision, his own emotions, his feelings. Um, and it's, um, uh, and his love for Hawaii, it's uh, the Hawaii environment, the surroundings. And, um, and he's very happy about that. When, when he sees that somebody really enjoys his painting, he feels the connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mosaic is like the ultimate um, signature of his artistic career. It gives me great satisfaction to know that he had accomplished this great task. And um, yeah, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs>